Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about why some people are quoting Toro. I see a lot of videos coming up how people are like, that's it. I'm quoting Toro. I'm done. And I wanted to go ahead and talk about it. Help maybe some of the people that may be watching this video that are thinking of doing Toro. Give them some tips on how they can maybe become successful and not be one of these individuals. Or maybe you are already a Toro host and you're thinking about quitting because you're not having success or you're running into some issues. And hopefully this can help you out too. But before I get into it, everything that I use for Toro, I'm going to put a link in the description box so you can check it out that I think will make your life easier. That's definitely helped me being on Toro. So go ahead and check that out. Also, I'm going to ask for a big favor. You can smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and leave some comments down below. Let me know your experiences if you thought the video was helpful. And let's go ahead and get into it. Now. You may be on YouTube searching and you may be seeing it yourself. A lot of people are saying, hey, I'm done. I'm quitting Toro and I've watched their videos. I want to know why are they quitting? And after watching a few different videos, I saw a lot of common reasons why people were quitting. And I want to get into it. Now, the way I do Toro is different than a lot of people I've seen on, on YouTube, at least. Now, I'm not saying that no one does it like me. I'm not saying I'm the best at it but I've had success. And because I've had success, I want to share you how I do it, my views, because I think it could help you. Now, a lot of people I see buying used cars and they're putting on Toro. And some of the people I saw, they were buying seasonal cars, what I mean, like convertibles, their favorite Mustang or Camaro. They're buying high-end cars that maybe is their dream car that they can't really maybe a Ford and they're buying these cars and they're not putting any money down. They're just using their credit. There's a lot of videos on TikTok, Instagram. Well, I don't know about TikTok actually, sorry, but on Instagram that I see where they say, Hey, buy this car and you're going to make all this money. And they're not telling you all the risks you run. They're not telling you how you should really be doing it. Or maybe they do. Right. But there's just a lot of times what I see is just an expensive car saying you can make all this money, sign up to this course. And a lot of people don't know, sometimes those ads where those individuals are making their money selling courses and the reason they have that fancy car behind them and they're saying they're making all this money is to get people to sign up to them. If I have a Lamborghini behind me, I'm saying, hey, I'm making $30,000 passive, not doing anything. Just sign up to my course and give me a thousand dollars and I'll teach you how to do it. You may do it, right? Because most likely you might want to be in that situation. And I'm here to tell you, I'm, you know, I recommend, I don't think that's, you know, don't go for those courses. In my opinion, I don't do it. I think a lot of those people are making their money off the courses and not really on what they're saying they're doing. And a lot of people can fall into that trap in hopes to bettering themselves. So if you're really looking for a side hustle and you're looking to make more money, here's what I do. I don't buy used cars and I'm going to tell you why. I buy brand new even though there's going to be a lot of oracles online, a lot of videos on YouTube saying the best cars to buy are used, I'm going to say why I stay away from them. A used car that's a few years old tends to be sometimes out of warranty. They tend to be, have miles on them. And a lot of people saying, oh, you got, you know, you bought it when it lost, you know, when the depreciation took, you know, all the hit was when it was new and depreciated. Now you're getting it when the depreciation's less. Right. That's not true. Car dealerships. If you're buying your car from a car dealership. OK, this is mostly they're going to give you whatever your car's worth at auction. OK, most of the time they don't even want to give you what you see on Kaylee Bull Book. That's what consumers have access to Kaylee Bull Book. But really, they go by whatever they can get for your car at auction. Reason. If I take your car in on trade and I put it on the lot and I can't sell it, the only other thing I could do is take it to auction. And I'm going to want to at least try to get my money back. So. If I buy a car at auction or if I buy a car from someone trading it in, I have to sell it for more than what I paid. So if I got a used car, for example, for $15,000, that's really what it's worth. That's pretty much what most dealerships are going to give you for that car. Guess what? You're not going to buy it at 15. You're going to buy it marked up. So that car that they got for $15,000, they're going to mark it up depending on the car. This a $15,000 car would be a uh, you know something that they're not going to mark up that much. If it was, you know, the more expensive the car, the more the market up because the more money they're going to want to make on it because there's more risk. So like luxury cars and things like that, when you drive them off the lot, they take a bigger depreciation and dealerships know that those cars could be harder to sell because 
they cost more. But when it's a lower income car, right, usually they'll mark it up $2,000 and $3,000 more than what they paid. But then that doesn't include the dealer fee. So if I got if the dealership got the car for $15,000, they're probably going to try to sell it at $18,000, for example. Then most dealerships are going to have a dealer fee of roughly $800. Some dealerships even uh, have dealer fees higher than that. Some dealerships are even doing a reconditioning fee where they didn't really do anything to a car, but they, they call it a reconditioning fee to get it ready to get sold. And they'll charge you another $1,500 or more, whatever. So I would definitely stay away from a dealership that's doing a reconditioning fee because that's ridiculous. And I will look for dealerships with the lowest dealer fee and the best price. So when if you're going on Auto Trader or you're on their website, look at the small print because there are dealerships out there doing all these things. And then they're also forcing people to get these protection packages, paint protection. And this is where, you know, people fall into a trap where you're buying this used car that's already marked up $3,000. You're got it. Then the dealer fee goes on top of that. Then they, some paint protection nonsense that they're going to sell you. And then you go into the finance and you add gap. And before you know it, you're driving out of there in a car that's you that you paid five thousand dollars more than really what any dealership is going to give you for. So technically, right there, you're upside down five thousand dollars. And on top of that, you probably didn't give a down payment. Okay, you bought it all based on credit. You're hoping to rent it out on Toro. Some people don't even have a savings. And then if something happens to a car, they can't make the payment. Then they're like, I hate Toro. Or they got this car. They're already upside down on it. They're renting it out. They're renting it out. It's getting racked up with miles, right? And they just keep letting it get rented out. They don't retire the car. And then finally, when the car, the tires are bald and they need to do maintenance, they're like, let me just get rid of it. They're severely upside down. And that's why I stay away from used cars. Used cars, you're buying them marked up, meaning that you're getting them, you're paying more than what any dealership is going to give you. So if you're not giving it up a uh, down payment, you're definitely going to be upside down. You're also buying an older car. If you're buying a car that's three or four years old and you're doing a six-year loan, for you to pay that car off, it would be like 10 years old. And 10 years is probably not going to be worth barely anything. I'd rather get a brand new car, not make sure I'm not paying for these paint protections. Remember, you're buying the car to make an income. I don't want a paint protection. I don't want all these add-ons. That's the biggest thing. People fall for these add-ons. You have to say, no, I don't want the paint protection. I don't want any of these add-ons. Remember why you're buying the car. Go to multiple car dealerships. Make sure you're getting, you're doing your research on Auto Trader and everything. Get the car at the best possible price. If you're doing a good purchase price, this will help you not be upside down. Okay, so making sure you're getting a good purchase price, getting a new car, and keeping it. I keep it for a year, roughly. I'll have twenty thousand miles. That car still has a good amount of value. Now I can't guarantee you that if you do this, you won't be upside down. I haven't been upside down yet. Doesn't mean I never will. But buying economical cars, brand new, and retiring them in a year have helped me not get upside down. Why? Because I'm not getting all the protections on there. A lot of dealerships are doing these. If I go to a dealership and they're forcing me to get a protection that I don't want, to me, that's unethical. You didn't sell me the protection. I'm telling you I don't want it. Why are you telling me I have to pay for it? That's not how sales works. You could try to sell me a product and sell me you know, on the value on it, if you convince me, then that's fine. And I understand that your business, you want to maximize your profits. But if I'm telling you that I don't see the value in your product, you're not doing a good job selling it to me. Don't force it on me. That's not sales, right? Sales is convincing people of your product and showing me the value behind it to get me to pay for it. If you can't do that and I'm telling you I don't want it, then don't make me buy it. And if I'm buying a car to rent it out to make income, I don't want those add-ons. It's not my personal car. It's a car that I'm going to use to make money. And if I plan to get out of it in a short term, then I'm not going to add any of those things. So I stick with new cars and I stick with economical cars. I don't go for seasonal cars like convertibles, muscle cars, or I don't uh, dream cars like, you know, some fancy luxury car like a Mercedes, a BMW. Those cars, a lot of them don't do a good job holding their values. If I'm buying them used already with high mileage or, you know, close to, to their warranty expiring, the repairs are more expensive, and you're putting these cars out there to be rented, they're going to get driven more than normally, so they're going to be on higher mileage. And again, the seasonal cars and the luxury cars are going to get rented less than economical cars. And some place I can get it where some exotics and luxury cars might do really well, but you have to look, where do you live? 
And can you cover the overhead if that car was in a, at the shop because of an issue or an accident at a body shop? You know, can you cover the, the monthly expenses? If you can't, don't buy it. A lot of people are getting in trouble because they're buying cars and they don't have a, sa a savings. So some of the things that I think will make you successful in Toro and help you not have to quit the platform in a year or two is first, if you know you don't have a savings, don't do Toro. Don't do any business. First, build a savings, right? To back up your business. Build a small savings. Also, start off with the economical car is what I recommend with a payment that if the car for some reason had to go to the shop, it gets involved in an accident, that you can cover the, the car payment. Or if you and, a, and a, a boyfriend or girlfriend are doing it, that you two can cover it in case the car was out of commission. Have a plan. Have a plan if the car is out of commission. Get a car that you can pay the monthly payments, and start a savings. One of the reasons a lot of businesses don't succeed, okay? And some of you might say, well, Toro is not a business. It's a side hustle. Toro can be a business, and you do have expenses just like a business, and you have an overhead. So you do need a savings. You need, if you don't have one, I recommend coming up with one. That way, if something goes wrong in your Toro business, you can cover it with either your savings or your income. I'm trying to get you to start on the right foot so you can succeed on the platform. Now, if you're just not doing anything, you're just jumping in and buying used cars and getting your favorite muscle car and things like that, most likely you're going to be quitting Toro and you're going to be taking a big hit on all these cars you buy. So ways that I'm going to recommend, start a savings, make sure you're getting cars that you can buy. That's why I recommend economical. Another reason, guess what? There's more people without money than there is people with money. So economical cars tend to, there's always tends to be a high need for them and they tend to do well year round, right? They're not seasonal cars where, oh, summertime, we want to rent the fun Mustang, but then it might not do great in the winter. So I don't really want to get a seasonal car. I want to get a car that's going to do well all every month. Then I'm going to be getting out constantly. Again, economical. Also, the overhead on an economical vehicle is going to be a lot less, easier for me to, maintain if the car goes out of commission if i get the car brand new guess what it's safe you when you rent a car you probably want to save car for yourself or for a family right for loved ones so a new car you got brand new tires you got the warranty anything goes wrong guess what all that's covered on a used car out of warranty right you would be covering that you know with your own money and repair bills could be really expensive that's why i go back to new you got that warranty why do i get out of it in a year because in a year if the car only has twenty thousand miles Usually that's where I'm at in a year between 18 to 20,000. The car still has a lot of worth. When I take it to, for example, car, I take it to CarMax. You may want to sell it off car headband or trade it in, but I like to take it to CarMax. CarMax is still sell that car for a good amount of money. And I tend to get all my money it basically ends up being a wash. I've had even situations closer to COVID where I made, uh, I got more than what I owed on the car, believe it or not. Right now, those days are, you know, getting behind us. But at least if they can pay off the car, that's great. Also, I do save money because I do account for depreciation. Let's say at the end, I was upside down one day. Well, I take that into consideration that these cars, I know they're going to lose value. So I'm putting money aside. For, so at the end of that year, when I go retire that car, if for some reason I was upside down, which shouldn't be much, I will have the money there to cover it from the rentals. A lot of people, what I see do is they put cars to rent. They take all the money and they spend it. So now you don't have a savings. You don't have an emergency fund if something were to happen to that car that you're renting out or your small fleet. You spend all the money that comes in. Then when you go retire the car, you're upset that you're upside down and you don't have the money to cover it. And then you get frustrated and you quit the business. That's on you. You're running a business all wrong. Uh, the majority of businesses fail. And one of the reasons is lack of capital. Doing business, doing a side hustle is not easy. Nothing's easy in life, okay? So if you're not gonna do things correctly, which would be having a business savings, calculating your depreciation, being smart with the money coming in. When you go buying a car, doing your homework, doing your research, you know, not just going on, oh, okay, this guy or this girl says, buy a used car. I'm going to go buy a used car. Used cars are not always the answer. Usually on a used car, you pay a higher interest rate. Most of the time, they're out of warranty. If the dealership sells you on an extended warranty, guess what? You're going to be further upside down because that's going to be added onto your loan and you're not going to get that money. So it's a lot easier to end up really upside down on a used car versus a new car from my experience, okay? 
Now, if you had a different experience, you can go ahead and leave that in the comments below. But for all you that are thinking about doing Toro or the ones that are already doing Toro, remember, when you're buying a car, very important, do your research. Make sure that car has warranty. Make sure it has low mileage and compare it to a new one. I would recommend a new one, but I know some of you are going to not take that advice. But always go for new first. And if it's not working out, then check out the use. But do your homework. Also, account for depreciation. While that car's renting out and making you money, save some money aside in case you are upside down. Also, make sure you're building that savings. OK, that way, if you have any issues in your business on your side hustle, you have some money there to help you and back you up through any hard times, because like anything, you're going to have good times and you're going to have bad times and you want to be ready for the bad times. Very important. And I think if you do research on this, on the cars that you're getting and you stick to newer cars, you retire them early before they're rocked up with a ton of miles. You're putting a uh, you're calculating for the depreciation. You're saving money every month for that. You Start, you have a, a business savings account that you're actually putting in money on regularly. So it's building up for any issues that you have. This is going to make you way more successful, way more successful. And if you stick to economical cars, don't just go for your dream car. Don't go work hard and buy those dream cars for your personal use, for your own car, the car that you're going to take care and drive personally. But to rent, I would stick with the economical cars. Now, if you see know someone that's making a ton of money with luxury cars or exotic cars, build up to that. But I wouldn't start off with that before I got into an exotic car, before I got into these high-end cars, before I try to get into that, I will build a foundation. I would build a foundation with economical cars. I would learn the business. I will build uh, a decent amount of money saved up, have uh, that constant money coming in. And then I may venture out to some other cars. Me personally, I haven't done it. I do know on some of the exotic cars, you can make money. I don't think so much on tour. I think that's more like private rentals and in certain cities. But again, I haven't really got into the exotics, but I have done the economical cars and there is money there if you do it right. But from the videos that I've been seeing, a lot of people that have been quitting, I see that they're buying used luxury cars, they're buying seasonal cars, they're buying more of their dream cars. A lot of them are doing it just with credit, with no savings. OK, they're not maintaining the car's property, the meaning they're, the tires are bald. They're they're not keeping up with the maintenance and things like that. And then also, since they're buying seasonal cars or high end cars, they're not booking as much as before. And then they're just putting it at rates where they're not making any money. They're just trying to get the car on the road to cover the payments. And guess what? Now they're really upside down because you're not making money on top of the car. Right. You might just be making you might just be paying the payments for now. But guess what? Every time it goes out there, you run a risk of it getting in an accident. And also, you're putting more wear and tear on the vehicle and more miles, making the value even less. So you're really just in a bad situation that one day you're going to have to figure out how to get out of. And a lot of people are just prolonging it by just hoping to rent it more because they don't want to face the problem. And the reason they got into the problem, they're buying the wrong cars. They're doing it with no money and they're doing it all on credit. And that's a good way to hurt your credit and get yourself in a bad situation. So hopefully you found this helpful. If you're thinking of doing Toro, hopefully this gets you off on the on the right foot. If you're already doing Toro and you see that you're running into some of these issues, hopefully this gives you an opportunity to evaluate what you're doing. And hopefully you can implement some of the things I said into your side hustle to make you successful and make it something that makes you money every month. Hopefully you found it again, a, a good video, smash the like button, leave some comments down below. Do me a big favor. Don't forget to check out the links I put in the description box. I think they could really help you. And thanks again for watching.